I'm breaking the rules this morning. I know we're not supposed to have food and drink, but I got a hot tea with me this morning. <clears throat> Fighting a little something. If, uh, if I didn't shake your hand this morning, it's not because I'm being antisocial. Well, those that know me might say that I am. Um, I was trying to spare you the sickness. The bug hit us this week, um, and it's been a little rough. Um, you know, uh, will, will you pray with me before we get going? Um, pray that my voice uh, holds out, that I can make it through the next 45 minutes to an hour. Um, <clears throat> let's go to the Lord in prayer. God, we thank you so much this morning that we can gather together and worship and sing and pray together and study your word, God. Thank you for the freedom that you've given us, that we are able to gather. There are those around the world that are not able to. Um, they are persecuted. They are um, tortured. They, they go through difficulties just uh, to fellowship together and, and worship of you, God. And I ask uh, this morning that you would be with us. Lord, that the words that are shared this morning, God, that they would come from you. And that... Um, that you would uh, bring conviction and bring a renewed mind um, to us this morning. We love you, Lord. We worship you. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, as a form of review, um, we'll just talk a little bit about last week. We're ta <clears throat> talking about the separation, the sheep from the goats, in the final days when we go before the Lord and he will say, well done, good and faithful servant, or I never knew you. And um, what I was talking about last week was that it really, R.C. Sproul has a, a radio program and a, um, online uh, video sort of thing, that uh, podcast that he does, but um, it's called Renewing Your Mind. And and really, that's what it takes uh, for us to live according to what the Bible standard is. Is we can't be influenced by the culture around us. Because the culture is counter what the Lord is asking of us. And it's kind of sneaky, and it, it kind of you know, sneaks in through television and you know, commercials and all The focus is, in the world, is focus on yourself. The Bible says about God, focus on me. And it takes, it's a radical way of thinking, and like R.C. Sproul says, a renewed mind. And so we want to be a part of the, the people of God. I've got a cough drop. Um, <clears throat> When we go before the Lord, we want to be a part of those people that he says, well done, good and faithful servant. Not a part of those people that are so convinced, right? We talked about last week that there are people in this world all around us, hopefully not in this place, that are convinced that they will spend eternity with him. And when they get there, they will say, well, Lord, look at all these things that I did in your name. And they say, Lord, Lord, but not everyone that calls me Lord, Lord, right? And so we don't want to be part of that group that is convinced, man, I have got eternity set. I, 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 I walk down the aisle. I said a prayer. I'm good to go. And then go before him and him say, I never knew you. Um, today, so that's part of what we talked about last week. We were in Matthew last week. Uh, today we will be in Luke um, chapter 12. I'm going to jump around just a little bit, not a lot. We'll mainly stay in Luke chapter 12. 
um, we're going to start off in verse 15 and go through 21. And he said to them, Take care and be on your guard against all covetousness. For one's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. Right, right off the bat, right? It sounds like something that is counter what we hear and what gets plugged in our ear on a daily basis, right? Take care and be on your guard. There's no passive thing about this. It, it is an action. I, um, when, I, when I was a kid living here, I thought I'd become a boxer. I, 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 and most kids that live here, you know, might think the same thing. I, I took some boxing lessons and, and, uh, and I beat up on my friends in my block. And, um, but being on your guard is an active thing. This is defensive, right? It, this is not being on your guard. And people have done this before in the ring, and they've gotten knocked out. Take care and be on guard against all covetousness. It's talking about things and our desire for things. For one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. And he told them a parable. Again, we talked about what the parables were for, right? Parables clarify for certain people, depending on the parable, depending on the story. And for others, it was a way of confusing and thinning out the crowd. Those that were going to stick with Jesus, even if the story that he was telling was, man, that, I don't know about that Jesus, but they were still sticking with Jesus. And some that it didn't sit well, they, they, they left. They left. So <clears throat> a couple of different ways that the parables served his purpose. One for, was for clarification. And he told them a parable saying, land of, <clears throat> the land of a rich man produced plentifully, and he thought to himself, what shall I do? For I have nowhere to store my crops. And he said, I will do this. I will tear down my barns and build larger ones. There I will store all my grain and my goods. I'm emphasizing the my. We're going to get into it in a minute. <clears throat> and my goods. And I will say to my soul, soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, Fool, this night your soul is required of you. And the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So is the one who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. What is Jesus saying? Where are your priorities? Where are you investing your resources and your time and your energy? Because God, to be very clear, he wants to be glorified and he wants us to do what he wants us to do. Not out of obligation, not because we're feeling guilty, not because we're, right, we talked about a list, because we're scratching things off our list. No, because we love him so much. Because we desire to serve him. It's easy to fall into that trap, though, about possessions. It's so easy. There are industries that make a profit based on our wanting the, the, the bigger thing, a bigger truck, Watch out, we're in Texas. Um, the newest phone, right? How many phones has iPhone had in the last few years? Like, I I've lost count. I'm still with my little taped up uh, 4S or whatever. Um, <clears throat> right? Bigger, better, newest thing. There's a, 
industries that build their profits on just that. And they sell us that. We just went through the holidays. And we talked back in November about keeping focus. Stay focused on the reason that we're celebrating because we're going to get pummeled. They're going to be hitting us left and right. So it's easy because all that we're being fed, if we're not careful, now, if we're not careful, all that we're being fed is that. But if we're careful and we plunge into his word and we listen to his word, there's a wake-up call there. And he says, we're going back to verse 1, take care and be on your guard against all covetousness. We have material things. We have things. And, and it's sometimes, you know, it's, it's good to drive a big truck. I like big trucks. I don't have a big truck. I have a van because I have a bunch of kids. I used to have a 77 Jeep Cherokee that I sold because, well, we won't get into that. Um, but I understand, man. It, there's power. There's uh, get in the mud. You climb mountains. It's so much fun. It's nice to have some things. But, I just stepped on that. Do we possess them? Or are we possessed by them? Is it wrong to be rich? No. Abraham, Jacob, Solomon, Job... They were all men of influence that were very rich. Not just a few bucks. They were very rich. Parable isn't criticizing wealth necessarily. Because being poor isn't necessarily a virtue. Timothy, Paul wrote to Timothy, I, I've got the, the verse. Let me read that. First Timothy, chapter six, seven through ten. For we brought nothing into the world, and we cannot take anything out of the world. But if we have food and clothing, with these we will be content. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation into a snare, into many senseless and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is a, is a root of all kinds of evil. It is through this craving that some have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many pangs. What Paul is telling Timothy is, even the poor... Their desire to be rich, their investment and in trying to achieve these things, they will be lost. Because they thought that the answer, the peace that, that they desperately needed, the contentment that they wanted, was going to come from their possessions. And Paul is saying, man, they will be lost trying to get them. It's preferring worldly riches, material things, possessions, over Christ. This man imagined many years of ease, and comfort, and he makes constant reference to this my, right? I think four different times, four or five, I forget the, the number, four or five different times he's saying, my goods, my barns, my possessions, my... No recognition of how God had provided for him. None whatsoever. And so he's convinced, man, I've got it made. Now here we go. Going to kick back. He says, for, <clears throat> let's see, eat, drink, and be merry. But there's, there's, a, there's a 
part that he left off, for tomorrow we die. But for him, it wasn't tomorrow. It was, God is saying to him, today, your soul will be required today. What does this have to do with kingdom living? It's a reminder that we need to be living for Christ. It's not a passive thing like we just talked about. Being on guard is not passive. It takes intention, being intentional about the way we live our life every day. So we plan. We, it's not saying don't plan for the future. It's not saying, you know, don't plan for your retirement or have a savings account. It, it's not saying that at all. In fact, the Bible talks about the wisdom of doing all of those things. I'm going to go back. <clears throat> and he, uh, verse 15 of chapter 12 in Luke. And he said to them, Take care and be on your guard against, this is Jesus talking, on your guard against all covetousness, for one's life does not consist of the abundance of his possessions. And he told them a parable, saying, The land of a rich man produced plentifully, and he thought to himself, What shall I do? For I have nowhere to store my crops. He doesn't have a place to store his crops. So naturally, the right thing to do is build a place to store these things. All right? It's not good stewardships to let your crops go to waste. So we're still right. We're still, you know, where, where we should be. And he said, I will do this. I will tear down my barns and build larger ones, and there I will store all my grain and my goods. This is where it changes. And I will say to my soul, he's dealing with his soul. He's talking to his soul. Saying, we're good to go, man. where only God will bring peace and contentment. He's saying these things, the plentiful crop that we've had, this will bring peace. That's where things go off. Still in Luke 12, verses 35 through 40. You must be ready. Stay dressed for action and keep your lamps burning. And be like men who are waiting for their master to come home from the wedding feast so that they... <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> so that they may open the door to him at once when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds awake when he comes. I like to say awake a little bit louder when I'm reading. <clears throat> Truly, I say to you, he will <clears throat> dress himself for service and have them recline at the, at the table, and he will come and serve them. If he comes in the second watch or in the third and finds them awake, blessed are those servants. But know this, that if the master of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have left his house to be broken into. You also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. A couple of different examples there. Don't be thrown off by the thief. All that is being said there is if someone is breaking into your house and you know the exact time that they're coming, you're going to be ready for them. You're not going to leave the house alone. You're going to protect your stuff. But he's using that example about the time and the hour. We need to be ready because we don't know. We don't know what? We don't know about his return. He is coming back. He is coming back. Yes, he came. He died on the cross. And he had ministry. He was, <clears throat> he, 
He was still here after the cross. He did 40 days of ministry. And then he went back to the Father. But he's coming back. He's coming back for his people. For those that would call him Lord. Those that depend and lean on him. He's coming back. And so what the story, what the parable is telling us is both parables are saying, be on guard, be awake, stay awake. There was, in, in the Jewish community, back then there was three different watches. Sunset to, um, to about 10 p.m. was first watch. And then from 10 to 2 was second watch. And then 2 to uh, sunrise was the third watch. So this master goes off to a party and he leaves his servants in charge of the house. And he is expecting them to be ready for him when he returns. Not sleeping. There's, a, there's another um, story that goes, <clears throat> I'm forgetting the reference right now, but uh, the servants in, in that other story you know, getting drunk, mistreating each other, abusing each other. No, when the master comes, he wants to find you doing what you should be doing. How does that apply to us? What should we be doing? This is not rhetorical. You can answer. What should we be doing? Awake, watching, what was that? Building the kingdom. How do we build the kingdom? You can speak up. Right. Go. Go. Some of his last words were exactly that. Go. Where do we go? We go to Del Rio. We go to Valverde County. We go to... Texas, the United States, and throughout the world. It was a different, you know, names that he used, but that's basically what he's saying, is it starts right here, outside these doors. We go, and we bring glory to his name through our lives. It's a living testimony. Our life is a living testimony that points people back to Christ. We're waiting on his return. And then we will deal with him. When he comes... And he asks of us, what, what have you done? What happens to those that were prepared? This goes contrary to the culture at the time. Those that were waiting, he says... I will serve you. He's talking about the rewards when we go and we've been faithful and we go and we're face to face with him. And he says, well done, there will be a reward. It's okay to be motivated by that reward. He wants us to be motivated by that. But those that he never knew, it's eternal punishment. And it should bother us. It really should. To know that there's at least one, but there's many more that are lost, that have been convinced by the wisdom of the world on how they should live their life, and they're blind. And they don't see the edge. They're walking right up to it and they don't see that they're walking right off of it. Plunging into death. And 
as servants of the living God, it should bring us to compassion. It should bring us to the point that, man, we want to tell people. Not in a self-righteous way. Not, hey, look at me. Look, what, look how good I am. No. Look at my story and where God brought me from. Look what God has done in my life. Look what he's delivered me from. Look at all these problems that I've gone through. And God has been the one that's carried me through. My mom um, came to know the Lord 40, I think 47 years ago. And um, she went to a revival, went to a tent revival. Um, I think it was in Acuna. I hope I don't mess up the story too badly. But um, she, she was ill. Uh, she had several uh, problems, a heart problem, and, a, and her left lung um, was w- not working right. Went to the doctors, they took x-rays, they're giving her a certain amount of time to live. And went to this tent revival, she was healed, and had the proof, the x-rays before and after. Didn't have any theological training whatsoever. And she re- went around these little small towns in Acuna and then further into Mexico. And all, she's, all she had was her story, and she'd use the windows you know, in people's houses to prop up the x-rays and say, this is what God did for me. That was, that was pretty much it. So we all have a story. And we can get into deep theological discussion and that's that's great depending on what is motivating it motivating us to do that kind of a discussion but we all have a story that we can share with people and point them to truth and point them to Christ what will you say when we go before him well done. Matthew twenty four thirty six. But concerning that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, nor the Son, but the Father only. He's speaking in, in, in human terms. When he was talking right there about the son not knowing, he's talking about Jesus here on earth. He separated himself from that glory to be man. But, he says, no one knows. No one knows about my return. So be on guard. Because I will be coming back. Those of you that have kids and you leave them in the room, right, playing or hanging out or doing homework, I'm going to be back. I want to catch you doing what you're supposed to be doing. And you get back and they're climbing all over each other and stuff, right? Not my kids. (laughs) When he returns, he wants us to be doing what we're supposed to be doing. Not beating up on each other. But spreading his love, telling people about Christ. And living in action. Let our our life be a living testimony. We have one of the things that um, went wrong with with the rich man is that um, he was owning these things. He was saying, my, 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 and not recognizing that God had provided 
And then he was, he was just a steward. He had been loaned these things. God has given all of us, we may not think so, but he's given all of us opportunity, resources. How are we using them to further his kingdom? How are we using them to bring him glory? Let's pray. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for your word, God. We ask that it would shape us, God, that you would mold us through your word, through, um, through all the resources that you have, God, that you would continue to renew our mind. It is countercultural. It is um, maybe something new to some of us, God, to, to think in this way. God, but your, your word is true. Let it speak to us this morning, that it would transform. God, we love you and we thank you. We thank you for this time together, uh, that we've been able to gather together and worship you in song uh, and through the reading of your word, God. We love you, God. We worship you. In Jesus' name, amen.